Oh, it was so close. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome to another video. Today we're doing something a little different because instead of making a predetermined character or design, I'm going to let this wheel decide what my sculpture looks like. So we're gonna make a monster and all of the features and characteristics that will make up this monster were provided by you when I asked on Instagram and Twitter a couple days ago. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of those features and characteristics, put them on the wheel, spin the wheel, and then whatever the arrow lands on is whatever I have to use on the sculpture. So I'm gonna do like facial features, the color scheme, what the skin's gonna look like, and so on and so forth. So if that sounds like something that you'd like to watch, then hit like, hit subscribe, and let's get started spinning. So for the first one, we're going to do arms slash upper half. And our options are gorilla arms, crab claws, tentacle arms, no arms, which is the one I want to land on, raptor arms, human arms, <laughs> and arms with faces on the hands. All right, let's spin this sucker. I really don't want to look. Tentacle arms! Alright, we have our first characteristic. Moving on to the legs. Alright, for legs slash lower half, we have mermaid tail. Hooves. Tail instead of legs. Webbed feet. Tentacle legs. Spider legs. This is going to be the hardest sculpture I've ever made, watch. And human legs. Alright, let's spin. Whoa. A tail instead of legs. Wow, this is already looking really interesting in my head. All right, the next category, we have facial features. Did it ever bother you when you were like in class, when you were little and like the teacher would be erasing the board, like the chalkboard or the dry erase board and like she'd like miss a spot and it would just drive you crazy for the rest of the class? That used to be me. All right, the next category is facial features. We have 14 options, so let's get started. Two mouths, three eyes, eight eyes, Werewolf fangs, a forked tongue, noseless, and we're actually going to spin, I'm actually going to spin this um, three times for this category to get three different facial features. Long, warty nose, vertical mouth, <laughs> a tongue with its own face, big black eyes, one eye, so Cyclops, long flat bunny teeth, no eyes, and cat whiskers. All right. First spin. Noseless, now we're talking. Second facial feature. I don't even know what I'm hoping for. Two mouths, great. Made up for the no nose. And then for the third facial feature we have Please be easy. Long, flat, bunny teeth. All right, for the next category, we have skin or skin texture. For the skin, we have scales, smooth with glow-in-the-dark spots, leathery skin, stone skin, slimy, fluffy, and old man skin. All right, spinning for the skin. What's it gonna be? Stone skin. I had a feeling it was gonna land on that. This is gonna be ridiculous. The next category is coloring. All color shift, so all, I'm assuming, color shift paints. Yellow and turquoise, very specific. Black and purple, warm colors only, cool colors only, pastels, and all dark colors and metallics. All right, what colors are two-mouthed stone creature gonna be? All color shift. And then for the last category, we have extras, and I will spin this one three times just so we get three extras. Wings, God, please don't land on wings. Drool, scorpion tail, unsettling tentacles. So if it lands on that, we're just going to make the tentacles that are the arms unsettling looking. Does that make sense? Horns, antlers, a monkey tail, ram's horns, a little more specific, gills, Part of ribcage showing 
through the skin. Antennae, a spiky tail, and we've got back plates like Godzilla, and three tails. So this is gonna be fun. Where'd my cap go? All right, the first extra is gonna be a spiky tail. So the tail that it already has is going to be spiky. The next extra will be Oh, it was so close. Oh, no, 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 no wings. <laughs> drool! I will gladly put drool on this thing. And then the last extra is going to be... Uh, not wings, no. Part of ribs showing through the skin. Okay, I think I've got my work cut out for me, so if you wanna see this crazy thing come to life, then let's get started. All right, first step, armature. We're gonna use this thicker aluminum wire that I found at Michael's, and we're going to just make this sort of snake shape out of it, trim it to size, bend it here and there, and then add some of my normal 12 gauge aluminum wire for the tentacle arms. There we go, look at that fancy armature. Now we're just gonna bulk everything out with some aluminum foil. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more foil just to make it a little thicker. And as you can see here, I'm envisioning this sort of like worm snake creature. Then for the next step, I'm going to cover all of the aluminum foil with some Sculpey Ultralight. This is going to create a nice base for my final layer of clay. Uh, time to open a new package of ultralight. So satisfying. Once everything is completely covered and relatively smooth, remember it doesn't have to be perfect, we're gonna bake it, and then once it's baked, it's time to cover the entire thing in some Super Sculpey Original. Then once we've got our Super Sculpey on there and everything's looking pretty good, we're gonna set that aside and make the flat bunny teeth out of some Primo Translucent. And the reason I'm switching right to the teeth right now is so that I can pre-bake these and then just poke them right into the clay when they're done. All right, we've got our flat bunny teeth. Let's bake these and then while they're baking, let's talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and even the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Skillshare has classes in areas like illustration, photography, graphic design, animation, fine arts, marketing, and more. For me, I'm always personally drawn to the productivity and marketing courses. One that I'd like to share is called The Perfect 100 Day Project, Your Guide to Explosive Creative Growth by Rich Armstrong. This course is a great experience for anyone that is looking to ignite or even reignite their own creativity. And that is always something that I'm trying to do because I'm making something new every week. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. And annual Annual subscription with them will run you less than $10 a month. So with all that said, click the link at the top of the description box below to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. And we're back. Now for the creature's mouths, I'm going to add some more clay like this and then blend the edges in. And I'm gonna do this for the second mouth as well. And then I'm going to press out the inside of each mouth. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now at this point, I'm going to take my large ball stylus and press out the inside of each mouth, like I just said. And then just sort of work my way around in there and get them to a size that I like. Sort of shape them out with my fingertips as well. And then I'm going to take some red Primo and add it to the back of each mouth. And then press that in with my ball stylus too. And then the reason I'm doing this is because once I add the teeth, I won't be able to get behind the teeth to paint the insides of the mouth. So we're just going to use colored clay. 
Now we're just adding the gums with this nice light pink color. Shaping them out with my spoon tool. And there we go. <laughs> Looks really weird. All right, for the next step, we're gonna create that stone skin. I had no idea how I was gonna do this and make it work, and honestly, I really don't even know if it does ever work, but I tried. Um, I'm just adding, I'm just using my normal um, stone technique. I'm just adding little pieces of clay to the sculpture and shaping out the stone with my um, the tips of my thumbs. So normally, this is how I make stone, and that's what we're gonna do for this thing. And then I did make an executive decision not to make the entire thing look like it was stone. I'm just doing the bottom half. All right, now we've got something that looks like this. Not bad, not bad. For the next step, we're going to add the teeth. After brushing on a little bit of Bacon Bond to the gums, I'm gonna take my pre-baked bunny teeth and press them in and as you can see the clay is bending a little bit this is because it's primo primo is a very strong clay once it's baked and i love using it for that reason now i'm just sort of pinching out the edges of the mouths making sure that they are the shape that i want them to be Alright, and then quick side note here, if your clay doesn't behave like this when you open it and take it out of the box, it's not fresh. This is the freshest clay I've ever used in my entire life and it should just be ready to go like this straight out of the container. Alright, now back to the normal stuff. Here we go. I'm just rolling out the first tentacle, just creating this nice little tapered cone shape like that. And then I'm going to take my broken palette knife and cut a slit down the middle without going all the way through and then I'm just going to press this around the wire armature and this one goes so smoothly I'm actually going to show it to you in real time what an easy tentacle that was Now let's do the other one. All right, the next step is to create the exposed ribs. So I'm just going to shape out the opening with my spoon tool like that and just sort of press the inside in a little lower than the surface and then I'm going to take this ball stylus to press out the space in between each rib. It's super easy and super effective if you ever want to make exposed ribs. Now I'm just going to refine the ribs with my spoon tool. Now for the next step, I'm gonna create the separation of the stone and I guess flesh. We're just gonna use this snake of clay and blend the top edge in with his lower half. Now I'm just gonna take my explorer tool and add a couple of wrinkles. texture the stone areas with this firm bristle brush that I got from the dollar store and a toothbrush. Then I'm going to take my explorer tool again to create some cracks in the stone just to push that stone look. Now we're gonna add some suckers to the tentacles, but before we do that, we gotta add a little bit of bacon bond so they're nice and secure. Then I just rolled up a bunch of little tiny balls and I'm pressing them on like so. All 
And to finish them off, I'm poking a little hole in the center of each one with my tiny ball stylus. After finishing the tentacles to break up the smooth surface of the skin, I'm just adding some random little bumps here and there. Thought it was a nice touch. Now for the spikes on the tail. For each spike, I want to create a little indent with my ball stylus, add a little bit of bacon bond for added security, and then I'm going to use some black Sculpey Primo, make these little cone shapes, and press them into each hole. Now for the final step, before we gotta get that little black piece off there, there we go. Uh, it's gone. Now for the last step, we're gonna brush the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints. Get it nice and smooth. And he's ready for his final bake. And once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time for paint. We have to use color shift metallics for the entire thing. I've got every color shift paint they make. Some orange, some pink flash, purple flash, red flash, all the flashes. And we're gonna start with this emerald flash, and I'm just gonna use this for the tentacles and head. Now the first coat over the beige left us with this very light, pearly color, and I want a little more pigment, so we're gonna do a couple more coats. Normally, I would prep the surface in black or a darker version of the color, that of the color shift color, but I can only use color shift paint, so that's what I'm doing. And for the stone area in his bottom half, I am using some color shift purple flash. I just thought it would look cool with some complementary colors. They do make a black flash color shift paint, but it's really it's just black with like a gold shift to it, and I don't want the whole tail looking just solid black, so I decided to go with the purple instead. And then to sort of change up that pinky color, I added a little bit of blue flash on top of that. And now I'm going in with some emerald flash on each of the spikes. But we are going to use that black flash for the spaces in between each rib. So we're just going in and doing that now. And then I'm going to paint the ribs green flash. This nice lime green color. Then to break up all that green, I'm just going to paint the bumps on his skin purple flash. And for the last step, we're going to create the drool. I'm using a two-part epoxy resin. I'm going in very generously with it because I want to kind of get some drips from it as it's curing. And as always, always make sure to read the instructions on your box of resin. Make sure to take all necessary precautions. It may just look like fun and no big deal, but it is a toxic substance, so please be sure to protect yourself. And it's done! Wheel of Sculpture Episode 1 is complete. Let me know what you think of this challenge in the comments. I had a lot of fun creating this monstrosity. So let me know what you think. And then of course, be sure to like and subscribe. time for some final thoughts. Do I love this thing? No, not at all. But was it fun getting here? Yes, yes it was, I'll give it that. I really loved the challenge of trying to combine a bunch of different random features into one thing, even if I don't like what the end product looks like. I mean, I guess given what I was forced to work with, um, He's not that bad. So anyway, let me know what you think of this in the comments. Let me know what I should name it. I have no idea. Let me know if I should keep it or throw it in the trash or kill it with fire. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at of Clay. I'm even on TikTok too, so check that out, and I will see you in the next video.